So just like acids, we've got two types of bases. We've got the strong bases. Those are your soluble hydroxide. So anytime you see a hydroxide uh, compound uh, with you know, concentration, so you know it's in solution, that means it's soluble, of course, strong, strong base. Then you've got weak bases, which we uh, talked about the two types of those, the two general types. You've got your nitrogen-containing molecules, ammonia, methylamine, ethylamine, pyridine, aniline. Uh, and then uh, the other uh, very common uh, source of weak bases are the conjugate bases of weak acids. And so that's probably the most common weak base uh, in the world is this one, bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate. And where do we find that? Baking soda. So sodium bicarbonate, that's baking soda. Very common uh, household and industrial uh, chemical. And that's a weak base because hydrogen carbonate is the conjugate base of carbonic acid, H2CO3. Once H2CO3 donates, it becomes HCO3 minus. All right. And then uh, hydrogen carbonate, HCO3, is amphoteric. What's that mean? It's both. It's an acid or a base. Okay, so here it's acting like a base, accepting an a, a proton from water, making carbonic acid its conjugate acid. It's also the conjugate acid of carbonate. Okay, so HCO3 can donate a proton to become CO3 2 minus. And those, uh, these two equilibriums, mm -hmm, let's highlight it, are going on right now in your body. This is primarily how your uh, body uh, buffers its solutions, like your blood. Your blood is buffered to pH of 7.4, like 7.4. to 7. Point, or 3.6, 3.6, 7.36 to 4, 7.4 something, like really tightly, 45, 3.6 to 45. So 7.36 to 7.45, that's the pH of your blood. It's heavily regulated in that uh, uh, pH, uh, for you know biochemical reasons, but it does that through these two uh, equilibrium systems, these conjugate weak acids and uh, bases, and that's what a buffer is. It regulates your pH, and we'll talk about buffers in the next chapter. But I just want to highlight those two. See, I highlighted it and, uh, because I wanted. All right, so let's get going. So let's start talking about strong bases. Now, strong bases are going to be almost as direct as calculating the pH of strong acids. Uh, it's very, very straightforward. The concentrations are going to be pretty uh, easy to determine. And that is because, again, they're strong. All right, so potassium hydroxide, 0.225 molar uh, potassium hydroxide. We want to find the pH. All right, so the first thing we need to do is think about what is the hydroxide ion concentration. All right, so potassium hydroxide is a soluble ionic compound. And what do soluble ionic compounds do in solution? Dissociate. So you throw KOH into water. And it dissociates to produce K plus and hydroxide. H of M? Uh, no, that should be an S. Most ionic compounds are solids. There are some liquids at room temperature. Is there a gas? No, I don't think there would be any ionic compounds in the gas phase at room temperature. All right, so for every one mole of potassium hydroxide, I get one mole of hydroxide. So if uh, the bottle reads 0.225 molar potassium uh, hydroxide, what is my concentration of OH minus? Zero. Same thing, 0.225. All right, so then it's a uh, molar. Pretty straightforward, except for the fact that I've got my hydroxide concentration not my hydronium, so it's going to be a two-step calculation. So a little, I'm a little bit more involved in the strong acid. First, I calculate the pOH. pOH equals negative log of the hydroxide. 
So negative log of 0.225. Scanning. 12.6? 0.648. All right, so that's my POH. How do I find my pH? 14 minus that. So pH equals 14 minus the POH. Remember deriving that equation? Everyone had so much fun? Definitely no one rolled their eyes at me. Yep, that was a blast. 14 minus 0 0.648 pH equals 13. Point Three, five, two, four. I'll take either one. I won't lie. I'm less picky about sig figs for pH. I am. Well, there's just two. Uh, there's, there's. It's just not as easy to come up with rules. Some people like that. Uh, however many sig figs you have, that's how many decimals you should have in your pH. Some people think that however many sig figs you have, that's how many sig figs you should have in your pH. And so I just, eh. at least, I mean, just, just be, um, I guess, a little bit logical, okay? So don't, if 13.3, 3, that's fine. Three, or excuse me, 13.4, I'll take it. 13.352, okay. 13.3526742569724, no, come on. <laughs> All right. And here, just having said that, I'll give you a, I'll tell you a secret about sig figs in the real world, okay? Out there in, in the real world, all right? I should probably turn off my mic. I don't want anybody hear me say this. I'll edit it. I'll edit it out, okay? All right? When in doubt, okay, go with three sig figs. Okay, that's, that's the rule. Nobody asks questions about three sig figs. Okay, you turn in a report to your boss or you try to publish something, it's got 10 sig figs. People are like, what's going on? Like, well, how do you get all these sig figs? You turn it, you turn, try to publish something, it's like one sig fig. It's like, why do you only get one sig fig? Okay, you put, you put three sig figs, everybody's fine with it. Nobody asks questions. When in doubt, three sig figs. All right, so that was fun. Let's try another. How about... Uh, B. Should we do B? Okay. Let's do it. All right, so now we got strontium hydroxide. All right, so let's think about what's going on with strontium hydroxide, and then we'll determine the uh, concentration of hydroxide. So we've got strontium hydroxide, and it's soluble. Not as soluble as the group ones, but it's soluble. So it's still strong. It's a soluble ionic compound. And so when it dissociates, you get strontium plus hydroxide, right? Wait, do I do what? Two OH? Should I have two? Oh yeah, we need to have this uh, equation balanced, shouldn't we? All right, good catch. Good thing I left just enough space for a two. How convenient. All right, so that's important because that means for every one mole of strontium hydroxide I throw into solution, I get two moles of hydroxide. So if my, bottle on, if my label on my bottle is reading 0 0.0015 molar strontium hydroxide, What's my concentration of hydroxide? 
0 0.003, yes, twice that. And it's just a little bit of good old stoichiometry. All right, so I got 0 0.0015 moles of strontium hydroxide. And for every one mole of strontium hydroxide, I get two moles of OH minus. So it's twice that. <coughs> and so after I remember that, I realize that, that I get two moles, then I figured out my concentration of hydroxide, and then it's exactly the same thing. So my pOH equals negative log of the hydroxide equals negative log of 0 0 0.0030. 2.5? That's my POH which tells you all you really need to know, but everyone loves the pH, so we might as well report it. And so that would be 14 minus 2.5, and so what's that, 11.5? All right, so uh, strong bases, again, are pretty straightforward, comparable to strong acids, except for the fact that you have group one and group two. Group one, just the concentration is going to be equal because the one to one ratio. Group two is going to be twice the concentration of the original ionic compound because there's two hydroxides in strontium hydroxide or calcium hydroxide or magnesium hydroxide or barium hydroxide or beryllium hydroxide or, no, that's about it. It's only so many group two metals. I mean, you could say radium hydroxide, but that's radioactive. Where are you going to get radium hydroxide at this time of the year? You're just not. Purpose.